we would call it a kangaroo court because there isn't even an opportunity for the, the defendant to have his lawyer speak to him before or discuss the case or know in advance what the charges are or present facts in, in evidence before the court. During the first intifada, I experienced deten military detention camps. You get this administrative detention order and that's it. You are in the hands of army and uh, placed in, you know, horrible conditions. And nobody even, asked, even dare to talk about any right you have. You know, they feed you when they feel like to. They, they give you water when they feel like to. It's, and you know, they could shoot at you from the towers, from the soldier tower, if they suspect anything is going wrong. It's, it's like being exposed to death 24 hours a day. In fact, I remember this incident like upon arrival to Ketsiaot, which is the detention military detention camp in the Negev desert. The camp administration was trying to force prisoners to build more sections. And prisoners refused. So the, the army, the detention center commander, and I do remember his name, his name is Tsemah, came in after all detainees were standing in rows and, and started shouting at us. And, and then he said, who is the man among you, like in, in Hebrew? And, you know, two persons stepped to say, yes, what do you want? If you want to talk it, we can talk it. And he immediately grabbed the gun from the hand of the soldier and shot them dead in front of everybody. That's, you know, that summarizes what kind of fear we, we lived. And that, that was, I don't know what they will call it, excessive usage of force? Or is it uh, out of proportion retaliation? Because somebody said, I am a man, what you want to talk to me? This is called blood killing. And it was reported as a riot. There was a riot in Ketsiawad and two people were killed. See, it fits nicely. Those people are violent people in a jail and they riot and then army in order to bring back order and rest. You know, did unnecessary killings. Sorry, I mean, they have to. Nobody even mentioned that those people are caged and has nothing in their hand to fight with and that what could justify, you know, shooting somebody with a gun. So those kind of experiences are inside most of us. And that's why we, you know, we, f we feel being ignored by media. Like, that doesn't count. To find a family where no one has been in prison I think it's probably like looking for a needle in a haystack. It just, it doesn't exist.